Thank you. Okay. Um, again, some quick introductions to the, the four artists who are sitting next to me and who are also in the show. Um, Nicola Paris, Brigida Balta, Matteo Lopez, and Andre Kamatsu. Um, what I'm going to try and do is ask some, some questions that, that hopefully will lead into specific discussion of uh, the works that are in the show, um, which I hope will be interesting for those of you who've, who've seen it over the past couple of days or those who are planning a visit um, in the immediate future. Um, and also hopefully kind of talk a bit more about, about other, other works and, and kind of other influences. Um, to begin with, I wanted to, to ask a question that in an attempt to, to kind of make a link between previous discussions and this one, and to get an idea of how the artists themselves respond to, to how they're being, um, being curated, uh, you could say. So the question is this, um, in, in, in two parts. Um, in, in the context of the show, there's, there's three, three, uh, three ways in which your work is being, um, this isn't an attack, Tanya, don't worry. There's three ways in which um, <laughs> your work is being, uh, is being circumscribed. Um, and, and one of them is, is a strong relationship to, to drawing. The other one is that it's linked to this idea of um, itineracy, itinerancy. I thought that would be easier to say than peripatetic, but I was wrong. And um, the other one is, is uh, Latin America, which is something that we've discussed. So if each of you could say which, which of those you feel has the closest relationship to your practice, and then maybe um, go from that into, into a specific discussion of the work in the show and how you feel it, it, it kind of meets with the, the, the concerns of the exhibition. Um, can I start with you, Nicola? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I, I believe my work in the exhibition is more related to the idea of uh, drawing, mostly. Um, and also, I believe that drawing is like a, really related to itinerary, itinerancy. So maybe both, but mo mostly drawing. Um, because I'm, 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 and also I'm going to start to, to explain the work maybe. Um, I, I start to, to work as a, only as an as artist, like six years ago. And at the same time, I start to develop, I started to this, this piece. And from my point of view, this piece is an exercise for me. Uh, because with this kind of exercise, I'm trying to learn how to be an artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I didn't do art in the school, so um, it's an exercise. So, in an exercise is, is a you can it's a um, um, it's an speculation and also it's a study. Um, and and then then you start to to understand more the medium and understand more the the flexibility of the medium and how you can. Um, understand the world with the, I mean, from my point of view, with the drawing. Since everything has planet with the drawing, as for example, the anatomies and the cities, for example, everything ha can be understood th through drawing. And also drawing is like a, from my point of view, is like a um, um, resistance uh, process because um, uh, you can, find drawing or found drawing in any disciplines of the, of the world. I mean, a, can't, a carpenter make drawings to project their shares, that's the same as an architect, as, a, as the same as the musician. They combine the same basic elements in different ways and they make drawings. So it's a, in that, from that point of view, it's a transversal tool mm -hmm. to understand the, the world. And again, for me, it's a transversal too to understand my desires, my fears, and my my ideas. And it's also very related to the idea of of, of using drawing as a learning tool in not only uh, as an artist, also as a teacher, because I used to work like this kind of uh, 
place in the schools. So um, it's a very powerful tool to, to, um, to learn. And please note, I'm not talking about teaching, I'm talking about learning. And, and also, it's, it's, I, I start to use in this kind of uh, pieces, uh, drawing as a learning tool, as a transversal tool. Uh, it, and also try to, to understand the practice and my, and my relationship with my environment in a more transversal way, but also in more in a flat, in a, in a folding, ¿cómo se dice? Plegado? Ple, ple, eh, eh, plegable. Plegable, es more as... Folding. Pleaded eh, word, more than a fragment word. Mm -hmm. And again, this idea is very related to the, to the school, for example. Um, the discipline is under, are understood as a fragment parts of, uh, of the knowledge and also the body, for example. But I really interested in the idea of trying to understand the world in more in a folded yeah. uh, in not, uh, in way and not as a fragment way. And again, the drawing, I believe that is the perfect tool to, under, to, to approach the, the world and the knowledge in that way. <coughs> and and, and also, for example, the title of the, of the piece is Hurry Slowly, and it's an oxymoron. And it's very important for me because an oxymoron is a, a literary figure uh, that it's a, a contradiction. But I mean, hurry slowly is a different word, very opposite. But when you put together the, the words, it, uh, another meaning appear. And from my point of view, it's, uh, it's a really nice uh, figure to understand, for example, the city. Uh, I mean, I have um, a particular structure to understand my environment. And you, I mean, the spectator maybe, on the, uh, the, the other people who we, uh, I share the city, they have another uh, structure to understand the city. We, we are different person, different uh, ideas, different uh, structures, but we are when we put we live in the same space. We start to create a new meaning. Mm -hmm. So that's I believe that the city, for example, and the and the drawing, it's about encounters. It's about a confrontation in a good way, and and also I, I very interesting idea of try to build drawings from the encounters, from the from the leftovers of the others. And that's the reason I, I choose uh, objects and I wait for the right object to make mm -hmm. the right uh, drawing that explain my encounters to the leftovers of the others. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an oxymoron. So. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, answer, answering you. <laughs> I think uh, my, um, the theme you asked, I think I am more connected with the idea of drawing mm -hmm. in my work, but also itinerance. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very important uh, today, um, hearing people here, the lectures, uh, because uh, even uh, mainly the, the Pablo, when he, he speaks about drawing a region, as the Capacete project that the, the in, in fact, drawing a, a, a region with the car. Né? And um, for me, it was a kind of drawing also in a region yeah. in Brazil, because my project has to do with, uh, 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 I was invited for a curator in Brazil, Marcelo Campos, in 2008, to go to a region uh, uh, named Sertão. It's, uh, it's far from the city I live. It's, um, uh, uh, it's a, a climatically atypical region in Brazil because it's extremely hot and dry. And um, I, haven't, I had never been there, so I had a lot of expectations in my mind 
uh, to to find uh, a crackle, crackle, crackle to ground and and branches without leaves and things like these, and I was excited and I preconceived work to 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 do in this landscape. Uh, the curator invited all other four artists at the same regions to stay in, in different cities. Uh, and after that, we, 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 we got a, a book about this experience and an exhibition. Um, but when I arrived there, it was uh, a big surprise because I didn't find this, this landscape. In fact, it was uh, raining a lot, <laughs> and uh, it was green all around. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I really, uh, the, 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 the project I had imagined, because it was only uh, uh, during 10 days, and it's not too long time. So I had in my mind to, to use some material to cover the, the, crack, the crackle gaps on the, on the, on the floor. So where is the crackle? <laughs> uh, um, and uh, it, was a, it was a big surprise. And the surprise is exactly like this, how we ha have, have in our minds an uh, expectation about a place uh, uh, before experience the place. And it's really interesting because um, I, I, I really become really fr frustrated and disappointed because um, uh, uh, I was inside the Sertão, and, and I, I didn't see Sertão. I was like, where is the Sertão? <laughs> and then Marcelo, Marcelo was with me, the curator. It's a very nice experience, because the curator and the artist travel together. And um, we decided to rent a car to find the aridness. <laughs> and, and then we, we, we go to the road, and rain all the time, and the car and and uh, um, and, and that's uh, that that's is is I think has to do with this uh, uh, trying to draw a region yeah. because um, uh, 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 that's what's happened and certain uh, through the names of the cities and the villas we we was passing. Um, I think I was getting and capturing the region because what all the names of the cities, I, I wrote some here, is so interesting because all has to do with this, with this geography, with this dry geography because in fact it's a dry region. But I went in, in a season that, that was not expected with rain and everything quicker become with, with lakes and these things. So the name of the city is Lagoa Seca, Miragem, Brejinho, Lameiro, Espinheiro. Quer dizer, Espinheiro means thorn plants as cactus. Lagoa Seca means dry lagoon. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it was very beautiful. Then I, I was getting a collection of these names and uh, and even the names of the, the plants, because I noticed uh, 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 both the, the seed and the plants uh, have the same name. For example, the, fo the, the, the seed we, we, we arrived was Juazeiro do Norte. Is the name of a very common tree mm -hmm. of the region. And then um, I, I, that, I think that is the way that my, my drawings start. Is, is a, a, a necessity to capture this region eh, through, through this name. And it's very interesting that the name of the city is the same eh, as mm -hmm. the, the... And all, and, and all, all of them, what, what is, was interesting is, is uh, really to, under, to understand the region uh, through the tell stories, for example, uh, through the myth of the old uh, Indians that, are, that uh, lived in, in that place as Caridis Indians. And, um, for example, all the myths has to do with, with the idea of a paradise, plenty of, plenty, plenty of water. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, the Manaka and Jurema Preta will be respectively the queen and the, the, the queen and the king of the paradise. And this is, is the name of the true common trees. So all the, the myths are related with, with geography. So I think uh, uh, step by step I, w I will find the, the region. So it was really interesting how you have the kind of postcards in our minds that when, and I think it's very interesting th this discussion here because we are, we are talking about Latin America, maybe um, this discussion has to do with all we are, we are talking until now. Yeah. And uh, now I will, I will f finish saying uh, uh, other thing I observed that is very beautiful in that place that uh, I notice uh, that people there um, uh, ha ha have their religiosity very connected with nature that is really interesting and very ancestral because until now people uh, pray for the rain. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a kind of uh, ancestral uh, used to do that connect the, the faith with nature. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my, my work is has to do with this. It names produce the drawings and I collect the earth of these these drawings. I it's one of the works I, I produced there. And the second piece is the floor pieces was uh, was uh, I, I had also a drawing with the, with this earth from from Sertão, and it's uh, a replica of a ground, a, a, a floor that I visited in a house. So it's a kind of memory about the, the place. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, hello. Yeah. Well, I get in, in, entangled with drawing since someone uh, showed me this uh, expanded field of drawing, or, the, or what we can say is this uh, experimental way of drawing. Uh, actually, the drawing led me to become itinerant, itinerary. Uh, uh, all, the try, all the time trying to understand this uh, way of uh, work, this tool, which is drawing. And every time I feel that it manifests on different ways. Uh, I'm usually trying through different projects to approach different uh, fields of work through drawing, trying to expand the possibilities of drawing, trying to be a, a very ex a, like experimental, trying to transform the uh, plane surface into the tridimensional surface only in some cases just uh, work as a, a cartographer or uh, do uh, walks around the city or around or everywhere. And those different projects are connect one to each other. Uh, actually, it happens to me uh, when I make my first solo exhibition in, in Bogota. I decided to install my studio at this gallery space and I was working inside the space for a month. And after that, somehow that experience connect to another experience, which was a journey on a motorcycle, on a scooter around Colombia, as the, not, not as the Che Guevara hero, more, more like the, the anti-hero. <laughs> so, that project connects to another project, which is an, an ongoing project uh, about the railroad in Colombia that does no longer exist. And in some cases, I'm thinking about a, a way to define <coughs> in certain a situation drawing is a, also a documentary tool, the way you document, the way you see the way you classificate and the way you organize the things that you're uh, somehow that you encounter on those trips and those journeys. 
Uh, maybe by those experiences, I'm, I'm here. Because somehow I become like itinerante, itinerary. And when, when I was invited for the show, to the show, we start uh, talking with Tanya about what is the <coughs> proper work to show or to uh, add to the exhibition, the peripatetic school show. And we were, I was proposing different ideas and the end we, <coughs> we get to those sketchbooks or those notebooks that I'm, I'm using since a long time ago that are not quite academically, are just uh, phrases, uh, notes that can be combined by a, a telephone number or a recipe or a, a email of someone. It's like things that you uh, 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 just add to your sketchbook. <coughs> and in some cases, those notes uh, can be transformed on a on a object or on a drawing. So the the idea was to uh, make the exercise to walk backwards and start looking all those notebooks and somehow to make some drawings or some uh, notes of those notebooks. Mm -hmm and take it to the show, and also bring some different objects that have appeared on different other projects that I have done. So uh, doing this exercise, uh, it was quite an interesting feeling uh, to find that there was someone inside these notebooks. It wasn't me, it was someone that I was thinking the, his proper name is Drawing the drawing itself. <laughs> so uh, we end thinking about the piece to include on the show uh, is a character that is the drawing itself. Uh, and in, I was doing the exercise how to imagine or how to uh, get to a space, to a place that could be the room of this character, which is the drawing. So uh, I collect some different uh, pieces, different objects that I remain with me. And uh, I bring all this work inside a box, a cardboard box, and a suitcase with me. I just uh, uh, Took those ma took that material to here to London, and then suddenly this character installed in this space, and I think will be uh, living inside the this drawing room yeah. for a month or for two months. That I think is gonna be the show, and then apparently the show is moving to Middlesbrough, and then it could be. A, uh, we hope that the exhibition goes to the south again, and uh, uh, maybe this character will be living inside those spaces that in some case will, could be a gallery or a museum or a, any place. So that's the story related to the piece that you uh, can see at the, at the, at the drawing room. And, also, you are invited to uh, obviously uh, look inside one of those notebooks, which are on top of the desk, and actually open the drawers and find different objects, different, uh, like this uh, exercise of searching someone on his pockets and reading his own notebooks, which is, again, it's not me. It's, yeah. The drawing. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, my work. Uh, sorry uh, about my uh, my shyness. Uh, 
I think I, I, I don't know. I, I have to. I have some difficult to uh, like uh, uh, qualify uh, the kind of things that I do and uh, the, the the things that uh, I have to do or something like that, like, like South American artists or. Uh, uh, if I, I, I'm a drawing, if I make drawing, or uh, uh, I'm a, 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 a peripatetic <laughs> artist. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, I believe that, uh, I don't know, uh, my work, uh, uh, I walk, uh, uh, even li like a, a continuum process, uh, and uh, I believe sometimes uh, I use on the drawing to uh, to represent th these ideas or, or this kind of perception that I, I have uh, around the, the quotidian. So maybe the peripatetic uh, could be a good, uh, uh, the bad, best term yeah. for uh, catalog uh, my idea of artists, but. Uh, yeah, uh, since I, I I don't know. Yeah. But well, I, I, I would probably say I would probably say the same. I think if I was guessing what your answer would be. Yeah, but because it's it's very difficult to mm -hmm. to yeah, and it's, and uh, usually uh, you know, for anything uh, the human being uh, uh, have a uh, have a necessity to. To catalogate the like the anything, yeah. like to to dominate the that thing, like to ah to classify, yeah, it's like uh, there was like a, uh, on this all day we discussed like about Latin American artists. It's not a not not the artists or art. Mm. Uh, we're discussing the, the geography. Yeah. Um, that. Um, do you want to say anything specific about the, the pieces that are in the show? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that the, the, these drawings are, they call uh, Construindo Mundos. It's uh, building words. Uh, it's a kind of, uh, I believe, it's a kind of study to uh, rethink uh, like a, a nature, like the how the man could, could uh, build like a, uh, a build the nature. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's difficult to, to explain the works uh, because uh, the, 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 this work uh, developed when I, I was in in Madrid last year in the residence to Matadero, and uh, I start to think. Uh, about the the landscape and uh, what what's mean the landscape that's uh, when when you think of landscape you you represent it on your mind like a stereotype of landscape or like a, a, a city landscape or like a nature landscape what's mean that so uh, uh, I started to. Uh, uh, to ask by, by myself, uh, what is that? So, and uh, did this drawing talk more about this too? How, how you, you can construct uh, like a, a nature uh, element, but uh, in terms like an industry, uh, industry uh, uh -huh. process, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. I think it really, um, certainly for me, it helps me to understand a little bit more. I yeah, please. <laughs> one, idea, one idea I was thinking, I am thinking about is the possibility of the drawing to make pieces in, in a collaborative way. I mean, for example, I, I, in the way I understand your explanation of the work, it, that's one really nice possibility of drawing. You can, it's a really nice tool to understand and to share reflections. Mm -hmm. 
and and it's a common language that very quickly appear in in a com and you can build very quickly environments of dialogue. So I believe that uh, that's a really powerful thing about drawing that you can you can sh you can share your reflection very quickly. Yeah, I think it's very much like a language. It's very much like language. <coughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, a, it's more direct. Yeah, so it, with the drawing, you can you can really uh, give the status of an out, of the author to the spectator. I believe yeah. so. So, and you can you can share your your working method with uh, an imaginary character, or yeah. and also with a uh, with uh, the real spectator very quickly. Yeah. So, um, it's again it's a transversal tool <coughs> that is uh, always with us, and yeah. we carry that that language uh, yeah. all the time. So it's very powerful in yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, I then another question, um, which was partly wanting to connect in some way what we're talking about with where we are, because we're in an art school. And, um, and, and as you may or may not know, I mean, the way art is taught now is very different from how it was taught in the past. and. Um, I know that, I mean, Nicholas, for, for example, um, you don't come from the background of, of, of learning through art school. So I was curious to know, for each of you, really, um, how, you, how, you learnt, how you learnt to draw, where, the, where it came from, where, when, at what moment it became an exercise, at what moment it became a practice that you engaged in day to day or, you know, however regularly you do it. <laughs> I, I used to work as a teacher, but not in an art school. It was like a public school with little kids. And at that time, I started to use drawing as a learning tool mm. uh, with kids, again, in all the disciplines. Yeah, and again, it's not about the technique. It's not about the, um, the to learning how to use a pencil, and how to represent what you see. It's more about use that, the drawing in, in a transversal way and, and a tool to understand concepts. And, and it's really nice because the starting point is not the concept, it's the uh, experience <coughs> of, of drawing. And it's the experience of trying to understand what, what are you seeing maybe and, what, and the experience you have through drawing. And, and again, I mean, the drawing is a really nice tool to 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 explore and 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 also to speculate about your environment and yeah. about about the relationship of, uh, between you and your and your partners and your and the and the world that surrounds you. And so, the response is like I, I start to. To use drawing as a learning tool in a common language in all the disciplines, and and that time I realized the powerful of the of the uh -huh. of the tool, more of the technique, because it's present in all the disciplines, and it's it was or it is very fun to to learn with the with the students using drawing as a tool, yeah. as a tool, and and at that point, somehow I start to have more fun as a teacher, and. And I start to work more at a, as a mediator, as a facilitator, more than a teacher. Yeah. So I start to build uh, knowledge with the with the kids in in more transversal way. So yeah. it's like a double way learning. Yeah. So it's not about the again the technique. It's about an um, environment of dialogue yeah. and use the drawing as a tool. So the important thing is not the the what are you uh, the representation. What, what is the representation or what is the subject is more about the experience yeah. through thank the drawing. You. Thank you very much. When I start drawing, how I start drawing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. how you, yeah. you <coughs> learned how you started. Uh, I, I remember I, I went, enter, I, I must be around 22, I enter in the School of Visual Art of Parc Lage and uh, I start drawing there. It was in the beginning of the 80s, mm -hmm. and uh, the scene in, about art in Rio de Janeiro in that moment is, um, is, a, is, is, is starting a, mo a movement about uh, Geração 80, como vai você Geração 80, 
that was an important exhibition date <clears throat> that uh, pointed every art to a uh, uh, expressionism. So it was a kind of, for me, it's a kind of prison in that moment because I was very young and I started with a, a drawing more precise that that's no space in that, in that scene because it's a pre, eh, como vai você geração 80, that it's, you, you only can't express yourself like big gestures and big uh, screams, so <clears throat> I stopped drawing, in fact. And, uh, and I, 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 I looked for other means to, to, to do my work. But lately, I, the drawing returned as a necessity to, to think about some works. Uh, as, he, as he told, when we are, we are, as a concept about to drawing some projects, to involve with another actions, or <clears throat> for example, when I prepare some kind of glass masks to construct my words, I need to draw this, kind, this, this tip of masks and uh, and and <clears throat> and suddenly the, the draw become independent of this project, and, be, and it become a pleasure. And I keep going drawing until now, and um, as a, as a as a as an independent, not related only with projects. So that's it. In Thank you. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, well, as I mentioned, I start drawing or entangling drawing when I discovered it was a experimental field. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a an artist that introduced me to this uh, practice, and uh, was on a at the art school, and he was proposing different exercises of different uh, ways that you can use the tool of drawing. So in some cases, he proposed, uh, for example, to make a poster, mm -hmm. draw a poster, or in some case, design a catalog, or design a coin, or design, uh, draw a map, mm -hmm. draw different things, like different uh, application of the drawing. And when I finished the art school, I was trying to just like finish. And when you finish the art school, you're just like, you don't know what to do. So there are some situations and really funny situations that those kind of exercises that I have done during the art school start appearing during my, during the day life. So someone called you to, uh, they were needing to, someone to make a map for a, a specific investigation at some university. Someone asked you to uh, draw a portrait of someone. Then someone called you to uh, design a box for a specific product. So somehow I, keep thinking of those experiences and how that experiences were real mm -hmm. when I was at the, at the art school. And somehow I was also uh, trying to involve those common situations on my practice as an artist. Yeah. So somehow after that job of, that I was doing a maps for the uh, police and DEA related with the drug traffic and everything in Colombia. Then I realized, hey, well, I can take a scooter and just start traveling, doing a map, a bigger map around Colombia. So in some cases, that's uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, how to say, the, the push to, keep doing and uh, reproducing those kind of uh, exercise. And uh, 
uh, there's something that interesting too is the way you also can work uh, uh, teaching someone how to draw, yeah. but trying also to not to start trying to break that idea of this uh, idea of that the drawing is, if you see this as a academical, uh, too much academical, everyone is, will be fear about that field and there's no approach if you feel fear to draw. So in some situations when, when, when you are doing a workshop, you are just trying to invite people to experience those situations that you were taught already and uh, explain that those situations are real. Yeah. I mean, we are surrounded by many things that at first moment were a drawing. This building was a plan. These uh, banknotes that with that we negotiate with are someone drawing that went to a, an engraver. And so yeah, so yeah. So I was uh, trying to remember. Uh, when I, I start to draw, actually. Uh, I think uh, I start to, to have fun. Uh, basically, was when I was young. And I, I think uh, I remember, because my father is an artist. So uh, and at that, that time, he is uh, drawing like uh, a mad plant. Mm -hmm. So uh, and at that time, I didn't understand anything that uh, uh, that he made him but uh, uh, was very uh, what's the, uh, the word uh, well it's very it was very strange that the, when, when he he drawing in the in the paper uh, uh, a veg vegetable paper Particular paper you would use for yeah, and and like uh, configure the space and create the, the areas and, and we, without enough anything. Right. So I think uh, this thing uh, is stuck on on my uh, one door in my mind. And then when I uh, start uh, uh, when I enter in the university and I think that this thing just. Uh, went go out and uh, uh, help me to understand the, the, the stuffs. So uh, the, I think the drawing uh, always uh, been with me uh, because uh, uh, for a long time I have to to like work like many stuffs and some some works you you couldn't uh, make anything that uh, uh, didn't uh, didn't be que não era parte daquele trabalho wasn't part of the work yeah it wasn't pa part, of part of the work so the drawing uh, uh, I had a, like a, all the times like a, a small Scratch, but so mm -hmm. you making scratch all the time, and uh, and that thing you all the times lost the the papers. Mm -hmm. So when we when I found like on the on the on the bag or, or on the pocket, oh ah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now I have a, a scratch book. Now I uh -huh. I'm more uh, more organized. More organized. So <laughs> I try to. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I have a feeling we might be running out of time. Um, do we have time for to, to maybe just ask a couple of questions if anyone wants to take advantage of the artists while they're here? Each one of you, how do you decide when a drawing is finished? Um, and that's perhaps 
more relevant for the three um, apart from yourself. Um, um, but um, then for you, how do you decide when a series is complete? Sorry. How do you decide when a series is complete? I mean, how many pieces are there? And the question for, um, I can't remember the name of the, uh, Tony. Um, what's going to happen to the site-specific drawing? Are you going to do a new one for Middles Middlesbrough? Or are you going to, are they going to cut it out from the wall? And <laughs> <laughs> Paint over it and you, you do a new one. Okay. How, does one. how does one buy a piece of your work? Um, I think I think so get the painting. I think in Castilla. Pienso que está a venderla un poco difícil. He thinks that to sell this is a little bit difficult. Pero eh, he hecho otras que son más... Uh, pero hay un... No, bueno, hay, hay, si tengo una que, por ejemplo, que es de la distancia entre mi casa y la de mis padres. He has one piece which is the distance between his home at his parents' place. Y esta fue mucho más metódica, o más, más había, un, había un cálculo mucho más... Real, bueno, estaba, era, sí, justo, y se vendieron instrucciones. He did this piece, the distance between his home and his parent home, and he did the measure, the measure very accurate, at, and what he sell was the instructions to reproduce it. Good money, enough? <laughs> For example, for the, the piece of uh, the drawing room, it's actually it's the first time I show it. Um, I start that piece, how I said, like six, six, five years ago. And I didn't realize that I have a piece until, I mean, I just a few months ago. So, um, I'm not sure. I really think the idea of process in art, and I really think the idea of uh, each drawings, drawing belong to an uh, endless process, you know? So it's, it's like a, if, if I'm trying to learn how to be an artist, I, sh I want to be, to be in a learning process all the time. So um, it's a hard question for me. I don't know. I really think I will really believe in the process of art and the learning process. So, and actually, and actually, also in the in the, in the speculation in art. Uh, so, from a point of view, when, for example, when you see, it's like a very tricky question, uh, question and answer. But when you see the piece, a drawing, from a point of view, it's not finished because you are going to take part of the reflection with you. And at that moment, it's where the really process of the piece start outside of the gallery. So the, the drawing start to survive as a, as, a, as a reflection, as an idea of that outside of the paper, outside of the gallery. And it start to travel with you, with your experience, with your memory. and and. I really like to think about the, the possibility of drawing as an endless process. Yes? So, so does that mean that you could add two more pieces from in 20 years' time, or is this serious? Is this mm. particular piece finished? No, it's not finished. Actually, I came here to London, and I developed like four drawings more in, that, <laughs> in this day because I found really nice objects. <laughs> so, I, I actually, I want to make another two, and I believe I'm going to send from Bogota to, to Mima. And because, I, I mean, it's like an exercise, it's like a trying to make an equation, 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 mm -hmm. equation of the, um, of drawing, and learning how to, to draw, to make drawing. So I believe this, maybe it should be an endless series, I don't know. But again, it's only, I have like a 33 drawings, 
in six years. So it took me time. It's, I'm trying to hurry slowly to the end. <laughs> I think that's also something that's really evident in Matteo's work as well, that each project feeds, feeds the, the next. Yeah. 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 Yes, sure. uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's very difficult to know when a drawing is finished, even if you are a little bit obsessed of doing small pieces of drawing. And I think I think drawing is a timeline, and there are some partial drawings that can, you can organize it by dates, by days, by years, but it's an amount of work. There is no like a finished object, even though thinking that, that the drawing is also a very fragile, um, medium, the, the sun somehow uh, affect the paper or the ink suddenly with time start disappearing. So there are some natural uh, effects that can start changing completely that drawing that you think is finished. So that's what I think that is a, a timeline that it's uh, uh, made of many exercises, many drawings, many different uh, approaches. And uh, mm, yeah, that's I, I remember the um, Jorge Luis Borges de Alep. I think it's a really nice way to explain this. It's like a when you start to read the book, you realize that the, the, the story, the next story is inside the, the, the last that you read before. So it's that going inside, 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 and deeply, deeply in the, in, the, in the tool and learning how to use it in, but in the same object. So at the end, it may be that the same Matteo saying, like, start to make a, a, a huge line and try to, to make like holes and, and try to different and, and to understand the both sides of the line and try to, to maybe twist it a little bit in the in the process. So maybe from from my point of view it's that it's more about the try to to find the, the, the most beautiful line you have are ever seen. Or maybe to try to find the 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 most beautiful line you are going to make after. But there's also the error, no? Yes. The, the mistake, so. And it's part of the process as well. That's actually like a hole in the map, you know? It's like yeah. a, when you fall, it's like a, and, and you find something beautiful that you can start again and again in the same line. I, I, know, I, I, I could go on, you know, and, and ask more questions, but I think, I think we do have to stop. I think we've run over slightly, um, and we have a, a screening. So I thank you very much. And thank you. Yeah, I, w I really would like to. <laughs>